thousands of sick or disabled people have died as a result of being told that they are fit for work by Atos, the company the British government has contracted to conduct assessments on their behalf. Atos decides if a sick or disabled person who claims state benefit is actually in need of support, but their assessment process has come under fire due to the fact that 32 of the most vulnerable people in society die every week due to starvation, neglect, homelessness and suicide. According to the government's own figures, to 1,300 persons dying after being put into the work-related activity group, 2,200 people dying before their assessment was completed, and 7,100 people dying after being put into the support group. More people have died on British soil from this state-sponsored bullying than from terrorism. Now this issue is largely ignored in the mainstream media, so in this report we're going to go and look at what's really going on and we're going to speak to a medical health advocate who works with victims of Atos and he reveals some shocking information. Uh, no, I, don't, I don't believe that it's fair. Um, the people I've worked with have gone through a process which they feel um, hasn't respected their dignity at any point in the process. Athos are um, a company or an organisation who provides a service on behalf of the government. Therefore, um, they provide a service that appeals to the government financially. Um, some of my clients that I've worked with um, have explained to me that some of the people that have taken them through the assessment and um, some of the professionals involved um, primarily in the important stages of assessment, of assessing whether the, these people are fit for work or not, aren't medically qualified. Um, certainly not qualified enough to make that judgment as to whether that person is fit enough for work. It just it isn't fair. Um, it's not fair on people with mental health issues because you can't see a mental health problem, and it has been known to, to cause real, real serious problems for these people. Um, the ramifications are, are terrible for people with mental health and um, issues. Very, very bad. People with mental health issues becoming anxious, becoming violent. It's forced them into relapses. Um, they've made some of these people have made good progress with their mental illness. Some people um, I've worked with have been reclusive. For, quite some time and they're finally at a place where they can maybe go out into society um, and take part actively in society and now because of that office they've been told that they can work which is really raising the levels of anxiety they feel like they've been forced into it they feel like they've been judged um, on their illnesses and they feel like they've been told that they're not ill and they feel like they've been made to do something they can't do, they're not ready for yet. And it will further down the line, um, you know, disabled people or people with mental health issues um, are going to be discriminated against in the workplace because they can't carry the job out to the same ability as somebody who's able bodied and mentally very well. So if, if the government were to, to look at it properly, and perhaps maybe invest a little bit more money in doing this properly um, looking at people as individuals and taking into account their needs then I think the process would be a lot fairer the government needs to to look at the bigger picture um, because there's still people out there who are swindling the government of taxes and um, the government needs to be looking at um, you know looking at this area target these sort of people as opposed to picking on the most vulnerable people out there with disabilities and that's what Atos essentially does um, and that's, that's what a lot of people who I work with feel you know, they feel that Atos is picking on them um, because they're very vulnerable yeah yeah I hope, yeah yeah, and I can't go into too much detail about that, but yeah, and more than once.
you know, as a result of the assessment process. The services, social services are stretched now more than ever. Social workers are now working to two to three times their capacity um, as, as to what they were working a year or two ago. The services have been cut, there's cuts all over the place. So they cannot provide the service for an ever increasing amount of people who are becoming unwell. I think it's the government basically saying, look what we're doing, look what fantastic cuts we're doing, saying to the vast majority of the public, so let's not forget people who are disabled and who are mentally ill are marginalised anyway in society. So they're saying to the unmarginalised people, look at what we're doing, we're, we're sifting out the cheats, we're catching them, and we're, you know, they've been put to rights on what they're doing, we're sending them out to work, we're getting them to pay taxes like you do. But what the government are actually doing is they're picking on the most vulnerable people in society. And because these people are marginalised anyway, they don't have a massive voice. And it's, in, in effect, it's bullying. All I can do is hope that eventually the public become more aware of the, the atrocity here, what's happening, and be able to stand up and say, look, we don't want this. But as long as the government are sugarcoating it and selling it as something it isn't, then who else is to know? Who's, who's to know? We, it's up to people to get that word out to people in the wider society. Um, personally I feel that's um, it's, it's a travesty and things are happening to innocent people, vulnerable people who rely on the welfare state, people in the wider society um, aren't getting the opportunity to actually see what's going on. And I think if they could see what was going on, they'd, they'd be up in arms about it. And it's not just the healthcare professionals who are concerned. Tory MP Charles Walker, chair of the Procedure Select Committee, said, Atos is now so discredited that we should park it on one side and go off again in a different direction. Also, Katie Lane, head of welfare policy at the Citizens Advice Bureau told the Mirror there seems to be a clear link between the cause of death and the condition they were suffering from that led to the claim. We have always supported the idea that people who could work and want to work should be helped to do that but we are seeing a lot of seriously ill and disabled people being found fit for work. We have serious concerns about whether the test used to decide if people are fit for work is the right test. In November 2012, leaked documents seem to suggest that Atos had made misleading statements about proposed cooperation with disability groups to help secure a £400 million contract to perform disability assessments. Atos had named four organisations as possible partners despite having no contact with them. The charities strongly object to any suggestion that they plan to cooperate with the company. Speaking to The Guardian, Anne Maguire, the Shadow Minister for Disabled People said, these revelations raise extremely serious questions over the 540 million PIP contracts. There is now clear evidence that Atos won a 400 million contract with a bid that was misleading. She said, there must be an immediate investigation because the integrity of the entire process is now in serious doubt. Ministers must now explain exactly how these claims got through unchecked. Atos has also tried to remove criticism from the internet by shutting down websites that speak out against the company. The website after Atos received a cease and desist order and Atos lawyers also threatened legal action against Paul Smith who runs the Atos Register of Shame website. 
They have also shut down a support forum for carers, Carer Watch, and this removes a vital support network for many carers in the UK. But the question must be asked, if Atos was replaced, would things be any better? It could be argued that Atos are only doing the government's bidding, and the real problem lies with the decisions made by greedy politicians. However, before we finish up, I would like to remind any of Atos's lawyers watching this that this report is protected by Article 10 of the European Convention of Human Rights, and we will not be bullied into removing this information without a fight. And that's why I urge you good people watching this to download and mirror this report on YouTube by using services like keepvid.com. We must keep this information in the public domain and spread it far and wide. The British government has waged war against the most vulnerable people because they believe there are not enough of us who care. Let's prove them wrong. Well, that's all for me for today. For more information that you're not supposed to know, visit rinf.com. I'm Mick Meany signing off for Rinf News. Thank you for watching.